Hi everyone, and thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Please feel free to pause it along the way to read the different sections of our poster that are integrated on these slides. My name is Izut, and I'm a third year medical student at McGill University. This project was a student-led initiative to identify the areas where our healthcare system could become more sustainable, how we could act upon it as future healthcare professionals and as climate advocates. The healthcare sector contributes to almost 5% of the global greenhouse gas emissions, and Canada's healthcare ranks third in the world per capita. There's 1 million annual premature deaths that are attributed to air pollution solely, but there are many more health issues created or aggravated by climate change, as you can see in this diagram. It is therefore completely logical that the healthcare sector is contributing so much to health issues around the world. Following the first do no harm principle, the objective of the scoping review was to identify valuable changes to implement in our hospitals to ensure our healthcare facilities are in line with health promotion. The results obtained were very clear. Whether the studies were based in Brazil, Europe, the United States, or Quebec, seven main topics were identified. Energy sources, green building design and energy use, food services, supply chain, general healthcare waste, surgical waste, and anesthetic gases. And three main solutions came along those problems, education, waste management, and legislations. Simply educating healthcare professional on climate change and its impact on health was a big step forward, but also helped engaging them into actively participating in greening their workplace. Reduce, reuse, recycle are the big R for civilian waste management and healthcare facilities are no exception. Whether it's choosing local sustainable and most importantly, reusable materials or optimizing waste tri triage, waste management was one of the most important steps as well to reduce our healthcare impact on the environment. Finally, as much as individual actions can have great impact, there is a clear need for supportive legislation and administration both locally and nationally to assist the different initiatives necessary to green our hospitals. Here are a few examples. So developing comprehensive assessment tools for each section to measure the levels of emissions, waste produced, education, projects in place, or legislations can be used to monitor initiatives taken, as well as tracking progress and identifying barriers. In the end, creating institutional policies to green our hospitals and our patient care is the first step in ensuring active involvement of the health workforce and subsequent sustainable initiatives. With all the potential barriers identified, meaningful student engagement will be key to build a renewed green healthcare after COVID. And we hope the scoping review will help path the way for a better future. Thank you, and please reach out if you have any questions.